part um, today. How many of you have heard me say that in 2016, there were $50 billion spent that were attributed to fall-related injuries, right? A lot of you have heard, yeah, you've heard me say that many, many, many times. And I had not been able to find a statistic to go, align, go uh, along with that. Uh, an updated statistic is what I was looking for, right? 2016 was a long time ago. So, so finally, um, you can only imagine the amount of research in the papers that I have at my house. I mean, I, I'm not kidding. It's a stack, right? It's, it's how many, well, you guys remember the phone book, right? I can ask my younger kids now, you know, we used to have a phone book and they're like, why would you have a phone book when their numbers are in your phone? Just, just look in your phone, dad. I'm like, no, you don't understand. We had white pages, yellow pages. It, it was a whole thing. So, <laughs> so it was a, it was a whole deal. So, uh, I found a new statistic. I actually found a new statistic in 2020, right? This is the latest statistic. So $50 billion in 2016 were spent on fall-related injuries. Medicare and Medicaid bore two-thirds of those costs. That's what's significant to us. And there's 10,000 Americans turning 65 every day. Every 11 seconds, a senior is being treated in the ER for a fall-related injury. Every 18 minutes, a senior dies from a fall-related injury, okay? Now... To the money, $67.7 billion were attributed to fall-related injuries in 2020. $67.7 billion. Now, when we quoted that stat, I told you guys that's going to go up, and it's going to go exp up exponentially. That 10,000 Americans turning 65 every day, that's going to continue well into the 2030s. You know what else is going to continue? Patients and seniors who are developing neurological diseases, right? And those neurological diseases greatly impact our balance because two things. As we age, the synapses in our brains get further apart, right? Here's all you need to know. Synapses, that's the space between the two axons, between uh, the, the two nerves in the brain. When you make an action, you learn a word, there's cells that congregate, right? And you have signals and messages that go across these spaces from one nerve to the other in your brain, okay? Now, as you get older, I want you to think about these nerves as train stations, right? And your train tracks get longer and longer and longer as you age. It's very similar. You can see it in real life when a child goes to step up onto a set of stairs and he misses the first step and catches his foot and he goes to fall, but instantly he's able to adjust his foot and get it up and avoid the fall. For seniors in that same situation, it takes a little longer to adjust the foot, right? That agility. And what ends up happening a lot of times is they fall. Well, a lot of that is because the synapses in the brain, the train stations have gotten further apart and it takes those trains a lot longer to carry those signals from one train station to another, okay? Good news, the brain is malleable, right? It's malleable, meaning that we can move them closer together and the way we do that is exactly what we're doing right here in class. Exercising, right? Treating balance as a language. That's how we're gonna look at this, all right? We're not gonna go into that. I've done it many times. You can go to my YouTube channel and pull up that lecture and you can see how we talk about balance being a language and how our brain is connecting there. But neurological disorders, guys, your brain and central nervous system, brain, spine, that's your nervous system, are collectively excuse me, responsible for maintaining the balance on your feet. If something disrupts the communication between your central nervous system and brain, this will hinder coordination and lead to spinal stenosis and balance problems. Okay, so think about things that can hinder that. Things like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, dementia, right? What happens in, in Alzheimer's is you have dopamine that's carrying signals and sometimes it derails, sometimes it goes really slow, right? There's no therapy for that right now other than exercise. Exercise, exercise. Why? Because the brain is malleable and research shows us when we exercise, the brain changes, right? In 2007, German researchers learned that people who exercised and then went on to do a memorization exercise memorized their words and were more efficient by 20%, right? And there's even more research coming from our students in Naperville, Illinois, who exercised before taking a test. 
This test is given to kids all over the world, and this is how we determine where our ranking is in the world based on, on science, math, and uh, there was another one I can't remember. Science and math is what's mo most important for us. These kids were down towards the bottom on their last testing period, all right? And they test, I think it's fourth, sixth, eighth, I know it is, it's fourth, sixth, eighth grade. These kids, they were in eighth grade. The last time they tested, they were closer to the bottom. They, they exercised, long story short, when they retook the test their eighth grade year after they had been exercising before school, they ranked third in math, first in science in the world. In the world. Lots of research on exercise and the impacts on its brain. So let's run through these really quickly. Neurological disorders. Some of these you guys may have not know, uh, realized. So we're talking about vertigo. We're talking about uh, something called benign paramoximal positional vertigo. All right. What that is, is, is that uh, occurs. It's spinning sensations on movement, such as turning or tilting the head. What that is, is calcium crystals in your inner ear that are responsible for enabling control over your balance. And when those crystals are dislodged from their actual position or repositioned somewhere else, this is when you get that vertigo, okay? Vestibular neurit neuritis, all right? It's another form of vertigo. You have persistent postural, perception, dizziness, a lot of weird things. Here's one that you may not have realized, migraines. All right, migraines can cause balance issues. Concussions concussions. All right. If you've ever had a concussion, it's much easier to get the second concussion. From there, it's much easier to get the third concussion. Cardiovascular disease can cause some issues in your balance. All right. Nerve damage to your legs, peripheral neuropathy. All right. And medications, polypharmacy. Guys, most of us are taking more than one medication at a time, but I'm going to tell you now, best thing you can do for yourself is being in class here today. I had a friend who was going to school, was gonna become a doctor, took this class on medications, right? On uh, pharmacology is what they call it. They go through this, they learn about all these different medications that they are gonna be able to prescribe. At, on the last day, the professor stands up on the desk and says, congratulations, you guys made it. You've learned about all these different medications, but I'm gonna tell you one medication that you can prescribe for your patients that will do everything that every medication we learned about here in class this semester. Anybody wanna guess what he said? Exercise, you got it, that's right.